And just like that, guys, we're back in Las Vegas. Now I got the remote here. Check this out. Boom. We're back at Anthony's spot. By the way, I actually went in to get the remote to do this clip, but it just looked kind of cool. Look kind of baller. Hey, remember the tiles that we put together here in the garage? Looking mighty fine. And of course, we got the Phaeton in the freaking garage. Check this beast out. Anthony, he owns the Chrome Purple Lotus. He owns a Red Lotus. He's got the Phaeton. He's also got the Corolla right there. Pretty sick. Well, I'm going to show you guys that in a future video, but I've been trying to convince him to start a YouTube channel for the longest time. So comment, like this video. If this video gets, let's say, 10,000 likes, Anthony has to start his YouTube channel. He's got the dream setup right here. Two cars, he can work in his cars in here. He can work them on his driveway. Beautiful driveway, by the way. So we're gonna hop inside and we're gonna talk a little bit about today's video sponsor. We got another trip planned in the works for later this month. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys. All right, guys, we're back at Anthony's joint. He's been kind enough to let me crash here for a couple of days. We got the Monaco Excel sheet up as well, my laptop. Now, before we hop into all the expenses incurred on this particular trip. I was gone for like about seven, eight days. These international trips cost quite a bit of money and today's sponsor is the Dollar Shave Club. Like I said, I do travel internationally and domestically quite often, so everything needs to be travel size. So this is absolutely perfect for me, for you, it's gonna work out guys. So check out the line of goodies we got here. Now I know most of you guys shave usually daily. Luckily with my jeans, I don't have to like shave like once a week if that, but when I do, I love using their, here we go, the shaving butter, and we've got the razors all lined up in here. Let's open the sucker up, boom. Everything is super high quality and it just works. It fits in my little uh, travel bag, so to speak. And I've been using their new Amber Lavender Body Cleanser as well. Very handy. Sometimes the hotel stuff just does not cut it. The Dollar Shave Club is going to hook everybody up. They're basically giving away their daily essential starter set to new members for only, that's right, five bucks. Now, this starter set features three trial size versions of their most popular products. That's gonna help you stay fresh, clean, and it's gonna come along with their executive razor right over here. So that's right, guys. In your first box, you're gonna receive their shave butter, you got the body wash, and of course, the one and only One Wipe Charlie's Butt Wipes. Now, you're also gonna receive their executive razor right over here. And it's gonna include a premium weighty handle and of course, a full cassette of cartridges right over here. Now, after the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few dollars a month. Boom, there you guys have it. This $5 offer is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash fspot. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash fspot. So make sure to check out the link in the description below. Make sure to hook yourself up, support the channel, and we got a lot to do. We gotta go outside. The car is actually all tidied up. And we're gonna talk about reasons why I hate my Jaguar SVR, the 2017 Jaguar SVR. I actually don't really hate it. I do love the car. There's just a few little issues here and there. Let's head on out. We're gonna start this off with the biggest issue I had with this car and it's the MSRP at 130,000 US dollars. Obviously, I had a couple options on this. I don't have the uh, black package or the carbon package where these are, uh, these are carbon. This is carbon, it's got the front carbon lip. But I also don't have the carbon ceramic brakes because I don't need them, I don't track the car. Why should I pay an extra 20, 30,000 dollars for the SVR badge, which obviously has a better exhaust nice wing and uh, certain features that make it the SVR that can hit 200 miles an hour. But the premium that you pay, at least at MSRP, it doesn't make any sense. It's just too damn high, guys. All right, so a few things that I really, really dislike about the SVR, we're gonna turn it on right here. Boom, all right, close the door. It's a little windy outside. First things first is unfortunately, oh, and there goes Mr. Sheep. We got the retracting vents. Pretty cool right there. But unfortunately, the sound system in this car is absolutely horrendous. It's beyond words. I mean, I honestly think I have some blown speakers and I have the Meridian surround package too. So it's not like we cheaped out on this sucker. The infotainment center is absolutely, I just don't know how to put it. It sucks. And check this out. It looks like it's from MapQuest 1999. What the heck is this, guys? It's unbelievable. Now you compare this car to Mercedes, BMW, out, especially Audi, even Kias, like Toyotas, like this is so outdated. All right, so I just put the car in reverse here. Man, we got this terrible looking 90s quality rear view camera. It's not a deal breaker, it's just, come on. You're paying top notch dollar and this is the quality that you're getting with your rear view camera. It just does not fly. Check this out, I'm gonna zoom in. 
Look, they're not, it's not even like real pixels. There'd be like, usually like, you know, LCD will have millions of pixels to display whatever you need to be displayed. These are just like little blocks. And this does not belong on a 2017 $130,000 car. Granted, it's a very, very small issue and it doesn't actually bother me, but when my friend pointed this out, it's kind of like, dude, like Jaguar, what are you guys doing? All right, here's another small little issue that I have. I'm gonna put this in drive. We're gonna drive it for like a couple feet up here. I'm at a dead end here and I'm gonna put in park. Watch this. Take off the seatbelt right here. Look at that. The car just turned off. Now, I don't know if there's like an issue or it's like a feature on all these newer cars, but it's just kind of like, what if I just wanted to park, take my seatbelt off and grab something over there? That's kind of a small issue. Like I said, I'm just nitpicking at this point. Uh, these are not things I really hate. It's just like an inconvenience at times. So, and check this out, guys. We got the cheap plastic paddle shifters. Now, I know a lot of cars do come with plastic paddle shifters, so it's not a big deal. It's not the best and it's not the worst. It's just another small thing that I'm just nitpicking here. So I'm just letting you guys know all the small little things that kind of bother me or that I don't really agree with with a car. But like I said, overall, I do love the car. But man, they could definitely have improved these paddle shifters. Now, these are the buttons that change your song, your FM radio presets, and of course the mode. It goes from like, let's say Bluetooth to like FM radio to like AM radio to whatever it is. It's so laggy. It just takes forever to switch modes and it drives you crazy. Sometimes you'll be like, I don't wanna go to the next track. You press next, and it takes like three to five seconds sometimes to register. It's a little bit hard to see in the sunlight, but we got the LED lighting down near the footwell, and we got it also near the uh, door panel right over here it used to be incandescent yellowish lighting the shitty lighting it's kind of like why do you guys do that you guys have led lighting up here the front headlights are lighting you got the cool mood lighting over here when you're driving at night what happened down there guys why do we have to buy three to five dollar cheap led lightings from ebay from china replace them ourselves just to make it look nice all right so i just got out of the car and i just drove the car a few feet and the wing retracted back already so this is not a big issue but to, in my opinion, it doesn't look that menacing or that crazy when the wing is retracted. Now, this is because of the US regulation that I mentioned earlier. When the wing is retracted outwards, it actually sticks out further than the uh, the furthest point of the rear bumper right here. So we got the carbon fiber wing. When it retracts outwards, it's going to get damaged when uh, you bump into a wall at three or five miles an hour. I can't really remember what the exact speed is, but that's the reasoning behind why it only comes out at a certain speed and why you can only have it in park and you press the button to retract it to put in quote unquote cleaning mode. So you could basically get under here and wash the car underneath the wing here and uh, right over here. And of course we got the mysterious placement of the Jaguar logo underneath the wing right here. So you can't really see it. It's not something that I actually hate. It's just like a weird little uh, design thing that they've done here on the SVR. OG subscribers will definitely know I've always had issue with locking the nozzle when filling up the tank. So we got this all opened up. You put the nozzle in, you got the locking mechanism mechanism and it just for some reason in this particular car it just refuses to lock around 90% of the time so being a lazy American like I am you're forced to just sit there and pump your gas we got the front engine cover lifted up here pretty cool but there are known electrical and battery issues with the f-type now granted I haven't experienced any of them right now or yet so far I've been pretty lucky so as with reliability, I'm not that convinced that these Jags are bulletproof like the M4. So we're gonna put that to the test. We're gonna shut this down, bam. And by the way, it's quite heavy. Sometimes it needs two people, but it looks like it locked in place on both sides in one go. So sometimes it latches on on one side and not the other. All right, now if you guys watched my last video, you guys would know that these front vents here are actually fake. On the passenger side, these go absolutely nowhere. Now the front ones, they work, they're functional. The driver's side ones right here, fake. And here we go. We're back at the rear of the car again, and I have an issue, a quarrel, so to speak, with the exhaust system going on here on the F-Type SVR. Now, it's not the noise it makes. It's one of the best sounding stock exhausts on the market, but it's the attention it brings. You're going like 30, 40 miles an hour, you let off, you tap the accelerator, make a few pops, you get pulled over. Cops think you have a modified exhaust because it's so damn loud. And the final thing that I absolutely hate about the 2017 Jaguar SVR, honestly, let's just put it this way. This car will turn you into a massive fuckboy with all the pops, the loud V8, 
my goodness, you are not going to be driving this car slow. There's also the issue with depreciation with this car. In three years, this $130,000 car is going to be worth around $63 or $65. I can't remember, but that's a huge hit. So don't ever pay MSRP for these cars unless it's a 2018 model and they won't give you a good deal. But when I was looking at SVRs about a year ago, I'm telling you, they couldn't get the they couldn't get rid of these cars off their lot. This car sat on the lot for so long. So when I got this car, I struck them a really good deal because this car has sat at the lot for so long. So I was pretty lucky in that respect. So I can't really speak on the prices now because it's pretty difficult to find a uh, blue SVR 2017 and get a good deal on these days. There there aren't that many on the market so there you guys have it stay tuned for some pretty interesting content this upcoming weekend and later this month so uh i really do appreciate all the support from all the new subscribers and the og subscribers and there you guys have it this is my 2017 jaguar svr in the flesh and these are the things i hate about this car but like i said i actually do love this car anyways we're gonna head out of here we got a few errands to run and it's time to go guys so Stay tuned for the next video, and I'll catch you guys later.